Hello my friends, old and new, and welcome to our channel. My name is Chrissy and this is A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. welcoming summer and celebrating International Fairy Week with making indoor and outdoor fairy gardens. We haven't bought anything specifically for this project, um, just using some supplies we already had on hand. You will see a few springtime items from Dollar Tree, which I did previously stock up on uh, during springtime in preparation for this project. is working on assembling a little birdhouse that she will be making into a fairy house and if you saw my art supplies video you saw that we like to keep these little kits on hand and these are from Dollar Tree and it does include the adhesive in the kit if you do not want to use a hot glue gun Bella does really enjoy working with hot glue gun um, under my supervision, so that's what we're doing here. And then once she has assembled the birdhouse, then she's going to move on to painting it. We've already opened up the packaging, but I wanted to show you um, what i have left of the packaging so these are fairy garden doors they're wooden doors that we found at dollar tree again another kit it includes the paint um, but then my girls did use gems and tacky glue uh, to go ahead and add some sparkly gems uh, bella's also working on painting a another fairy house that the, she made this time from jumbo popsicle sticks and noah is working on a separate craft I just put together this fairy garden play-doh and loose parts invitation to create for the girls the tray is a party snack tray I've had in my kitchen I believe it's from part, uh, party city uh, the play-doh was made by us I also made these little butterfly stamps um, and a bunch of loose parts that we had in our classroom twigs rocks gems wooden pieces and the mini fairy garden pieces that you do see here are previously hauled from Dollar Tree. Uh, gems, which we also had in the schoolroom, and some peg dolls that we've already um, made as well. So let's see what they create. For Bella to find. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I found a little, of course, though, that she could find. I mean, it in it with the tiny flats. Mm -hmm. And okay. who's Bella? Is Bella this type doll right here? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's me. Lovely. Yeah, this is what you made? Yeah. So 
So tomorrow is International Fairy Day. Um, so we are putting together our outdoor fairy garden and right now we're adding soil to our first tier and this will sit outside on our front porch. Because my hands are protected from, from the dirt because I have gloves on. Thank you, Luna. Alright, pull it out gently. Pull out the bottom. Okay, so we've added our third and last here. We've also planted in all of our plants and our flowers. Now we're going to add pebbles or rocks and some lights. Okay. Papa, look like Mama. I'm looking. Yeah, it's 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 this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Okay, so it's pretty much assembled. We might tweak a few little details here and there, but for now, Lula, Luna is assessing it and she wants to use it as a little playscape. So I'm going to go ahead and let her do that. And yep, that's it. I love how it turned out. It really completed our little micro garden out on our front area. I'm about to bring down all of the garden resources and shelf work that we have been working on the past few weeks during our garden schooling unit study. And I'm going to be begin to rotate out with our first summer unit study, which is on ponds. But before I do put it all away, I thought you guys might like to see our shelf work activities and projects that we've worked on during garden schooling. The newest addition to our garden shelf is Bella's Indoor Fairy Garden. And this is made mostly of recycled materials and just supplies from our art supplies closet. She did work so diligently on creating these materials uh, for a few days and it paid off because they are really enjoying it as a playscape. So here you can see an oatmeal container, some popsicle sticks. The fairy garden door is from Dollar Tree and Bella just made it her own by adding some uh, gems and we lost a fairy doll. Uh, the peg dolls are usually always made by me or my oldest daughter. Uh, this is a bouquet made from a two finger knitting project with some yarn and then just some paper straws. And then this birdhouse kit you also saw earlier on in the video. So on this side of the shelf, we have resources that have actually been here for a while. So for uh, spring, we did garden schooling and that started off uh, with a flower week and then that rolled into planting foods in the garden and then that rolled into garden insects and finally into our fairy week. So it's been several weeks of a constant rotation here on our garden shelves. Um, but this is just what is still being enjoyed.
So this setup here is for an activity that they've been loving and it's an insect observation station. So here they're encouraged to use these uh, plastic bugs that we have, our magnifying glass and this principle that I created where they can note their observations. We have several sheets here um, and some that Bella did complete. So here she um, um, worked on an observation of a ladybug checking off um, everything that uh, she did see and then finally drawing the bug. Um, so she also worked on a grasshopper and then I think the last one here is a bee. So for this activity we did pull out our little collection of plastic toy insects and the big ones are from Dollar Tree. I do like to pick one up anytime I see a new one that we don't have and then some from Safari LTD tubes. Now um, if you don't have uh, plastic insect toys the printable does include these cards of uh, different insects with realistic photographs. I love how these turned out. And then here is our uh, little pocket microscope and you have seen this in a previous video as well along with our slides from learning resources. A few more things here in this wooden tray off to the side and these are movement cards that I also created um, just to get some gross motor movement into our day. So um, each one has um, a movement inspired by the insect. And also a freebie printable from the Pinne Homeschooler and I'll link it down below and these are life cycle strips just of several insects and uh, life cycle activities and anatomy activities are some of Bella's favorite so these are great to have on hand. For our first cubby of shelf work activities, this is a sorting activity and it's actually a freebie printable, but um, you know, I just like to make these type of activities a little bit more hands-on. Um, so the printable itself, um, it includes just little images here of what's supposed to be seedling packets. Of course, you can always use actual seedling packets that you can buy at Dollar Tree or your grocery store. So the idea here is to sort between vegetables and flowers. And so I use these um, seedling starter biodegradable um, like cups or trays, I should say. Um, and inside I added rocks to act as soil and again, it's just a simple sorting activity, but um, just by making it hands-on, it's a lot more interactive. And I do like to add a book um, to go with each theme of the activity or the cubby. And this is We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines and her family. I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. I believe Amazon has the best price right now. Moving on to our next cubby, Discovery Kids Busy Bugs, and you've seen this book here on my channel. My toddler loves this, um, but it's also interactive and has enough educational facts for my older two. The wooden puzzle is from Target Dollar Spot. It's for letter recognition and sequencing the alphabet letters. So the child is matching uppercase to uppercase until the worm is completed. Next is a bee themed math activity. First is this Nat Geo Easy Reader on bees. 
We always enjoy Nat Geo's beautiful photographs and illustrations. And I created this printable for a number quantity and one-to-one -one correspondence. If you laminate these strips, then you can pair with a dry erase marker for the child to trace a number. We just uh, traced with our fingers. And then pairing the printable with a manipulative, I prepared it with yellow and black pom-poms. Um, and then again, this is for a one-to-one -one correspondence and understanding the number quantity. If you pair it with a tool such as tweezers um, or tongs, it can also double as a fine motor activity. Moving on to some insect anatomy, and I've paired it with Nature Anatomy by Julia Rothman. So here I've bookmarked a whole section on insects, and this book just really has stunning illustrations and it has enough content for my young children. So more printables that I whipped up for the kids and this is for labeling. So uh, the set comes with a poster to use as a guide and then the worksheet is to cut and label. And Bella loves these types of worksheets. This is actually the third reprint I prepare for her. A part of a flower wooden puzzle paired with three part cards for learning the anatomy of a flower and for a simple object to picture match for my toddler. So this puzzle is from a set I purchased on Amazon and the three part cards are a freebie. So make sure to check the description box for every printable including freebies mentioned in this video. Here I prepared a garden themed sensory tray uh, using a garden photo as a backdrop, black beans to act as soil, safari LTD tubes, flower set, mini wooden flower pot, pots, um, some story stones, and a few other loose parts. I also did prepare three part cards to go along with the safari LTD tubes flowers. My tot really does enjoy object to picture match activities and then I also um, made part one of the cards into a booklet. I did create these cards myself but I lost the PDF. It must have not saved. I'm not exactly sure what happened but I can't find it anywhere to make it available to share with you and I hate that because I love sharing but I do know that you can buy a similar set on Teachers Pay Teachers. 10 Shiny Snails. Can you tell that we've owned this book for over a decade? It's been passed along from oldest to youngest and all my kids have absolutely loved this book. Um, it's a counting book from numbers 10 to one, uh, so backwards counting, and it's just fun for one-to-one -one correspondence. And I always have prepared an art type of cubby. So um, these are crayon rubbing plates from Dollar Tree. And if you saw my art supplies video, you saw that we own a few sets of these. So these are neat uh, that you just place the paper on top and you rub the crayon and then um, you have the end result of the flower or whatever pattern is on each plate. We also made an insects in HR uh, with finger painting and so then we were to make each fingerprint into an insect. 
and I also set out an insects and bug sticker activity book and this is by the brand Paper Craft by Designed. I've mentioned that I find these at AC Moore which is my local craft store. And the last activity is on foods we grow in the garden. So a sorting activity, and this is from Chicky and Rue. Included in the printable is the poster to use as the guide, the blank garden beds mat, and then the individual veggies to sort. So the child is to sort um, which foods are grown over and under the soil. I added kinetic sand and loose parts to the tray to make it into a sensory and more of a hands-on activity. And I paired this tray with food anatomy from our Julia Rothman collection. Again, I've bookmarked a section where we can read and discuss more about the foods grown in gardens. Following this lesson, we did our own gardening. We planted and have successfully grown peppers and jalapeno peppers in our little micro garden. There is a big reward in harvesting veggies from our garden to put them on our plates. <music>